are small, but we are many. We are many. We are small. We were here before you rose. We will be here when you fall. We have teeth and we have tails. We have tails. We have eyes. We were here before you fell. You will be here when we rise. We have eyes and we have nerves. It's we have tails. We have teeth. You'll all get what you deserve is when we rise from underneath. All right. Well, welcome out here to the depot. Today we're going to hunt rats. Uh, why would we do that? Well, number one, rats are fun to kill. Nobody seems to care too much about them. Uh, the other thing is that they're incredibly destructive creatures and they have to be kept under control out here. We're not just talking about uh, you know, normal rats that are, oh, you know, carry germs and disease and such, which are bad enough in themselves. Uh, but these actually get up in your engines and chew your wires up and uh, pretty much anything else they can find. They'll store trash under there, they steal your tools. Uh, they will just do anything they can. Uh, they're very organized creatures. Very smart, but they just uh, do not fit well with having things around that you care about and don't want to have gnawed to pieces. So, today we're going to be hunting some rats. Uh, today we have Moxie over here. He's a, he's a specialty in this, though, though Claire gives him a good run for his money sometimes. Mostly rat terry, a little bit of uh, Jack Russell thrown in. Rock here doesn't... Uh, doesn't participate much. He's more of a retiree at this point, and he does his best work at night. But as a 20 pounder, he's got about 30, 35 rat kills. Doesn't deal with mice. No, no you don't, do you? But uh, his game is waiting for them to come walking by and eating them <laughs> instead of attacking. But he does like to supervise. This is Clarence. He's the third part of the team. He's got a few kills, but he's not very fast. Uh, man, he's hell on him if he gets them, and he can't get him away from Moxie, but he's game, and he, he's the backup here. I guess you, we call him the, the Terminator of Rats, because if they run by him, it's a done deal. Right, Clarence? He's a Sharpe, and his jaws are very strong. As I was saying, uh, we don't just kill rats for the fun of it, though. It may be pretty easy to make an argument for that, but these things are quite destructive. You can see under the hood of the car here, under my uh, Explore the damage that they've done to the, the insulation on the uh, the hood and there's a little bit more damage down there In fact over here you can see a, a wire that they Snipped in two down there that I had to wire back together then just wrap it back. Their teeth are always growing. They're always they like to chew on things um, You can see a part of the bean that they're eating down in here They go and pick up these coffee beans that you see all over the ground here um, and take these beans in there and chew on them and sit on the engine. Nice place to hide. Uh, they're very smart. You can set a rat trap in there. Right, Mox? A rat? You like rats? Yeah. You can set a rat trap in there and they will lay a stick across it and set it off and eat the peanut butter. Uh, there, there was no stick even near it when I did it. So, uh, like I said, we're not uh, in hunting just totally stupid things here. That it's totally skewed in their direction here. Right, Mox? Yeah. Sometimes what we do um, it's a lot easier, obviously, is set these rat traps. Um, and uh, they're just giant mouse traps. You definitely do not want to let these things hit your finger. You'll see what I have to do, though, out here is that I actually took a nut and wired it on to the, the trigger uh, so that they really have to work at it because they'll just get up there and lick all that peanut butter off of there that I'm going to put on there in a second and leave the darn thing just, just set where they'll stick a a stick on it or something, but before they figure out this trap in the first instance, you can usually catch them if you just get a little bit tricky. So I'll put some peanut butter on here and set it. This is a old-fashioned rat trap. You catch them alive. I'm not sure what the purpose would be, but uh, you can sure a lot of work in making it. But they, uh, I hung a piece of cracker in here with some peanut butter on there, and you're supposed to basically go in through there, and they they walk over this and go in, but when they once again it, it shuts on them. If it's centered a little better. There we go. It's just, just like that. 
um, then you can take them out the other end by opening that little tap door down there. We I hung a piece of cracker with some peanut butter on there, kind of the international rat bait there. Um, and the, theoretically, they can't reach from the outside, and hopefully a, a raccoon won't come and take it from me. I'm going to go sit it by a pile and see if we can get a, a nice live one here tonight. Like I was saying, the, um, the our old-fashioned trap didn't catch anything because mice they can crawl in through here and got the cracker out from there. Um, so I didn't get anything. Um, better to set it in places where there are only rats. Interesting, this is another example, though we aren't catching mice. This is an old-fashioned mouse trap. My wife has collected antiques, strange antiques for years, <laughs> where we got this rat trap in. Um, you know, the mouse, you put uh, food down inside of the screened-in area here. Let's see if it can come off. Put it on there, and then that snaps on. And then they, they crawl in through the hole, and then they try to get out. It's like a fly trap. And um, I tried it last night and caught a mouse under the stove. So um, these things, uh, they're old, oldies but goodies. They do work. Well, I was talking about some of the damage that they, uh, they do to the cars and showed you on the Explorer I had uh, some of the damage. Actually, here a few years ago, um, I had one that lived on top of it for, for most of the winter. In fact, um, I would drive into town and he would ride all the way in there and back and he kept setting the trap off on the engine, but he just wouldn't get off of the engine. He'd come out at night and get some of these uh, these beans. I refer to them as coffee beans. I sh should probably clarify they're from the uh, Kentucky coffee tree. They're not coffee beans like uh, in the grocery store. But uh, they would, he'd come down and get these beans and then just take them up and eat every night. So finally I had to park it out in the middle of the uh, meadow. And uh, uh, so when he came down at night, he'd have to go too far away to get his beans and then he wouldn't be able to come back. <clears throat> the thing was, he wouldn't leave even then, so uh, I set the trap with some peanut butter and made a real sensitive setting. And uh, since he couldn't access his beans anymore, he actually tripped it off and finally got caught on about the fourth time he'd set the trap off. But um, it just goes to show you the measures that once they take up residence, they're, they're kind of tough to get rid of. Um, this will show you what these uh, these coffee beans they live on. What something I found in the garage here. Uh, I'll show you right here this chainsaw. I was doing some workout, but I went in there to get it out of the garage and you can see he's just <laughs> filled it up with beans from going in there and just stuck all those beans in there to, to stash them, I guess. Obviously it's not a place to live, but they just, that's just the way they are. They love those, those coffee beans. So, Anyway, like I said, they're busy little guys. All right, this is kind of an interesting picture. You got a little Jack Russell there in the middle. The guys are holding this. This will be from 1916 in World War One. And uh, what this little guy specializes in, in killing trench rats. In World War One, he had a lot of trench warfare, and uh, he killed these 26 rats in 15 minutes. Probably could have killed them faster than that if they could have found them faster than that. Uh, they're very efficient killers and the big difference between them and a cat of course is that they just love to kill and they'll kill that many effects a rat will or I'm sorry a cat would catch a rat and then stop to eat him and then go to bed <clears throat> more than likely it takes them a long time cats are efficient at, at uh, a long-term management keeping them around so that they don't get to these levels but once they get to these levels there's nothing better than having a little a terrier around in fact the word terrier is a modern French term for for burrow they were bred specifically for killing uh, things that come from the earth, hence the name terrier. Um, they don't play like I said, like cats do. And uh, believe it or not, uh, it was much. They couldn't be overwhelmed. A cat could be overwhelmed by these things, as, uh, so the story goes. And much of what I read about, uh, terrier just literally can kill them. Um, I, I've seen a terrier kill two rats in less than five seconds before. So uh, as fast as they can find them, they can kill them. They just snap their spines and flip them and move on to the next one. So very efficient in what they do and really nothing like them. So I thought you might want to see this uh, kind of an impressive picture. All right, this is a good example of type of nest where they incorporate like a larger part. There's a big log under there and other th tree branches, but this is a rat nest here. Um, you can see all the ranch branches piled up. We're gonna look at a bunch of different kinds. Kind of the basic rule I have about rats is 
you stay far enough away from the house and there isn't a problem. They have other things they have to, I should mention they're like beavers and mice, their, their teeth never quit growing so they have to chew on stuff. So here's another example of a very small nest that's been constructed, but clearly he's within the, what I consider <laughs> too close to the house. In the same way with this one over here. Maybe we'll tear this one apart and try to find its resident here later. Another good example, one up against the base of this big tree. It's been there probably a couple years. It takes them a while to store this, get this stuff all up and then we'll take it apart and it has all the different storage areas in it. And I was talking about the bathroom, the seed storage, the, the bed chamber. As you can tell, the Moxie and Clarence kind of know what's going on with these things. <laughs> and then we got, of course, Rock, supervisor over here. Where are you? Oh, another excellent example of a, a rat nest using other, uh, other structure to build around. And, uh, you know, these things are just impervious. Standpoint of the rat, pretty hard to get caught. You can see a little path down there where he's going in. Because these structures uh, actually go underground. Um, but you can see, you know, if this thing freezes in the winter in particular, there's just nothing that can get him. Either a rat at night or a snake can get in there, but that's pretty much it. And they're nighttime creatures, so hawks aren't really an issue. I suppose a coyote could get you or a fox, but better be at the right place at the right time. Let's go look at another one, guys. This is one of my favorite ones, and a lot of times you'll see this in uh, hedgerows. You'll, you'll see them actually built all the way completely off the ground in the tree, but as you can see here, it's got a lot of the nest really built up off the ground. Um, kind of a big disadvantage because you can't get under the ground to escape predators, but uh, that's what you'll see a lot of them like that, completely up in a tree. This is another good pile. I was down here cutting wood earlier today, but whatever you have to say about rats, they are busy. Again, wood rats, also known as pack rats, uh, they'll do this underneath of the hood of your engine or in your garage if you let them. You'll find your tools underneath. I mean, think, you just wouldn't believe what they'll take. But you can see they're perfectly capable of carrying some pretty big things when they're making their nests. And this is kind of more symbolic of an older nest. You'll see this and then over here is what, I don't know technically, but like a secondary nest. So if we tear that one behind us apart, that you, he'll head over there usually. And if there's no secondary nest, they, they inevitably head straight up the trees and go up on top of the trees and sit there and look at you. What do you think, Mox? Hmm? Okay, this is the rat pile we're going through here. Yeah, too close to the house. We probably run right up the tree. I'm not sure where I'll go here. There's always somewhere to go for a rat. Anyway, you can see the guys here ready to go. You ready, Clarence and, Mo and Mox? Or Mox? Rock's here somewhere super. There's fast. Mox. Okay, here we go, guys. I'll try to describe the construction of it as we go through it here. So this is like something, you know, is in here. This is part of their storage. They have food storage areas, they have a bathroom, they usually have a sleeping area. And they also go down under the ground, I guess, uh, as a last resort. So, let's keep digging here. Not sure what this green stuff is, or maybe it's just new nest material. What do you got? Seldom come out until the last one. If they come out at all. Oh. As a pack rat would do, he took one of my gloves and stored it. Get a name for him, pack rat. Okay. I'm ready, I'm ready.
one must be at his summer home. So we don't always find him. Oh, I didn't get stabbed, did you? I see your face. No, you don't care. You're getting blood all over? <laughs> Good God. Huh? Trying to kill your dog? Okay. Turn it off. All right, so the last one was nothing in there. Happens a lot of the time. Don't know if it was abandoned or if he was somewhere else for the day, but running another one. This one's kind of problematic. You can see everywhere there is to run, but, uh, but you can also and, uh, get down here on the dirt mounds and things. And where he, he goes underneath, it's you know, kind of like a beaver lodge. They go in underneath and gain access. Right there, this one apart to see what happens. We're ready, guys. Clarence and Moxie. You smell him? Wide. Yes. be in a summer home. We'll go and check out the other nest over here. All right, so uh, this one's very close to the other one we just looked at, and it's very territorial, so this is definitely his. Clarence feels strongly that there's a rat in there. Is that the deal? This is a good place because rats are smart. This log is uh, going to be tough. You can see some of the new greenery that he has there for his nest in the last fall. All right, hang on. I know. You smell it, do in. you? I think they smell him. Because it's cold and windy. No, it's coming out is a bad deal. Well, the dogs are definitely worked up here. I'm working on it. This is where his nest is. Could be inside of it. They have a little nest where he's probably in the slot. Very good. Hollow. Hollow green. Yeah, you can see where he's been storing it. They want him in there. Nothing like rotted out tree logs, huh? Kind of close if he runs out. <laughs> Boy, guys, I think he's in there, but I can't get him to come out. Huh? Great yeah. area. What? It's a great area, I must say, but I'm kind of lost. <laughs> Yeah. Hang on, hang on. 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 Hang those are the dogs, but I can't get him. <laughs> that ain't no dummy. No, we're not.
find another one. Onward. <laughs> are convinced. There's a rat in here. I don't know why, but they're not leaving. <laughs> so this is the next step in this. Well, maybe we'll have a chainsaw massacre on a rat here. That <laughs> never. Okay, hang on. I'm gonna get him out. Here we go. Hang on. Point for me, point. Which way? Right there. He's in there. Moxie? Over here. There he goes. He went back in. He went back in. Over here. There he is. Who's the rat? Who's the rat? Ah, there he is. He's over here, guys. He got away. Yes, over here. Where He's he in this again. He's in this one. Go back in here? Yes. All right. The excitement is just almost too much. All right. Let's get some of this away. He's over here, Claire. He's over here. We'll cut some more. <laughs> he might have found a good spot to hide in the middle. Get back so you can see him run again. Okay, guys, you ready? Up there he is! Where? Behind you that way! Come on, boys. This way. Where he goes, Fox? Fox, right here. Fox, hey! Come here. Right there. Right there. Get it clear. Fox! Yeah, I got him. Claire's right. got him now. Hey, Claire. Show me. Come show me, Claire. Show me. Show me, Claire. I just wanted to get a frontal shot. A front shot, big guy. I am trying, but I can't get the front of him. Woohoo! So this is a wood rat. He's a fur on his tail. Let's, let me get over here in the sun. Differentiate this from house rats and normally rats. Oops, I was gonna show you the nipples, but it's clearly it's nursing a nest, but Claire is excited. Claire is very excited yeah. about his catch. Hand over to me. Anyway, that's how you hunt rats in the woods. <laughs> and those were it's a uh, pack rat, a uh, wood rat here we call them in Kansas, but they, they seen their nests and uh, that's how we hunt them out here and it's never any easier than that so that's the way it, that's the way we do it out here all right we didn't catch anything in, in the traps last night they were uh, both robbed of their food one was set off and they were that often happens out here you never and it could be mice or something that rat trap if it was a mouse on there would never catch him but nonetheless a rock delivered and uh, during the night he brought home a rat or something decided to leave a rat at my doorstep so I'll show you what he came up with as an example of what a wood rat looks like. Mm -hmm. Good job, good job. Yep. Well this is a, a wood rat that Rock caught and uh, yeah, you need to move, move out of the way now. Go on. Like I said, he does his best work. At, come on, I'll give you a rat back in a minute. So, as you can see, it's about uh, 14 inches long this one is in particular um, I've got them up to the uh, longest I've ever caught I think was, was 18 inches long from from nose to tail so from here down to his nose I thought I'd caught a small rabbit at the time the most distinguishing feature about these things is as they actually have a, a furry tail that they don't have a scaly tail like a regular mouse um, and just kind of a nice furry thing and actually their fur is very soft it's much like a rabbit um, like I say they're not the typical, what would be a Norway rat, 
which is associated with uh, carrying the fleas for the Black Plague and, and things like that. So, uh, anyway, this is what rats look like before dogs get hold of them and tear them to pieces. Uh, Rock just seems to like to bring them home and leave them on the doorstep for us for some reason. Um, anyway, like I said, this is probably about the 40th one he's done this with, so he's very effective at it. Just to give you a little perspective on the, the size of these things relative to the field mice that we we have out here a lot. The darn things are just everywhere. Set traps, you can catch many night like I did last night just for an example. Uh, cat doesn't catch many kind of below him. He likes to catch rats. So that'll give you an idea on you know the, the different size of these things and why they're so destructive. You know, for their size. They can do a lot of damage. Alright. Um, we found a rat out here in the woods when I've been chopping wood recently, and he, they moved into the wood pile literally overnight. The dog says he's in this pipe here, so I'm going to try to get him to come out of the pipe and go into that cage down there. And uh, if that doesn't work and he comes out and gets away, hopefully the dogs will catch up on this. So, look out, guys. Find a stick first. See if this stick works. It's still not long enough. So I might be able to get my arm down in there. I know he's in there. Did you, are you filming the rat? Go down there, guys. Look, there's the rat. Hey, look what he's got. Look what he's got. Can't figure it out. There he is. Now he's in the cage. And that's how you catch a rat. That's a bar. That's a wood rat. All right. And now the fun begins for the dogs. Let's see. They know what's going to happen. Don't feel too bad for the rat. <laughs> he does have a chance to get to the woods. You better get him. He's a, this is a good one. Biting Claire. Did you get him biting Claire? Good. The whole thing's on there. Good job, Claire. Good job. Good job. Okay, you can take over. Hey, good job, Claire. He bit your face, huh? Did he bite your face? Let me see. Oh, no. See? <laughs> you gotta kill them or they will bite you. <laughs> yeah. You better do him in. He's so worried about keeping it from Claire that he's uh, not worried. <laughs> now both of you have learned, huh? Anyway, that's how rat terriers kill rats. That's why they call them rat terriers. And since they both got bit, they'll hate him even worse next time. All right, well, thanks for tuning in to the Rat Patrol today. I hope you learned something, or at least were entertained. Uh, that's how we take care of rats out here. And remember, as Shakespeare once said, the only good rat's a dead rat. <laughs>